Good news, everyone. We're going to cover the history of systems thinking in this episode. Thanks to the feedback that I got from my previous episode, I was able to understand how to do this composition better. Uh, I was recording off of my uh, breakfast table bench thing and that fan was getting in the way. So bringing it to a separate area in my home, uh, we're gonna talk about Norbert Viner, who was a professor of mathematics at MIT. Now, before I get into him real quick, when you Google systems thinking and its history, you'll get a professor, uh, Jay Forrester, uh, who was a professor at the uh, Sloan School of Management at MIT, and he formally created system dynamics, but the origin of systems theory and systems thinking itself goes a bit further back in the early 1900s. Now, uh, Norbert Weiner, uh, when he was doing mathematics at MIT, he collaborated with an engineer, Julian H. Bigelow, who was a very young engineer at the time, and they were working on an automated anti-aircraft gun, or at least the technology of it. And they noted that these intelligent systems of the machines that they were working on, they suffered a particular disease when they tried to change the level of performance that it was executing on. They noticed that it would uncontrollably shake. Uh, they, what they describe here as it oscillated uh, uncontrollably. Now, Norbert Weiner thought that this was very interesting. And he spoke to his colleague, Arturo Rosenbluth, who is a neurophysiologist. And he asked, well, does this happen in human beings? And Arturo was like, yeah, this does. Uh, he confirmed that there is a human parallel. Uh, he was explaining that if you have a damage to your cerebellum, uh, you will, a, a patient will overshoot their intended action. Like for instance, if I'm gonna drink a glass of water, put it up to my lips. Uh, I will overshoot it. Like I will not be able to do it uh, to a point to where I'll probably let go of the glass and you know drop the water, etc. And from there, uh, he understood that when it comes to a closed information system, something as basic as physiology and adapted towards machines, there's two things that are required in this action loop. First, you have to evaluate. You have to understand your actions. And second, you have to improve or adapt upon uh, that action itself, uh, basically a recursive improvement, which is something that is talked about in artificial intelligence and the dangers of that type of uh, thing. And so in that understanding, uh, Norbert Weiner was crucial in the development or the discovery of a negative feedback loop. Uh, which happens in a closed loop of uh, system. And furthermore, when they made that parallel between humans and machines, uh, they published uh, the topic of cybernetics in 1948. Now, the great thing about what they innovated on is the fact that they utilize a multidisciplinary scenario, a mathematician, uh, an engineer, uh, a neurophysiologist, and there's some other contributors to this entire thing, but the multidisciplinary approach is a key part in systems thinking. It doesn't mean that you specialize in one thing. One thing I'd like to note is that Anna Akana did a, a recent video of Be a Jack of All Trades, and she expanded on the, the typical thing that we all hear about. She said that Jack of All Trades, master of none, though oftentimes better than master of one which is a more recent addendum, but it shows that there's an evolution to where we're no longer thinking of just being specialized in one thing, that there is a greater understanding and progress when you're multidisciplinary. And so ultimately, that's just what I want to leave you for now. Um, I'll, I'll expand on systems thinking in other ways, uh, but for this episode, that's the short history of systems thinking, um, where it came from. It started in cybernetics and eventually uh, over the decades evolved towards uh, system dynamics and systems theory. So that's all for now. Uh, for Owlglass, I'm JB, and uh, this is Jin.